Recent research from North Carolina State University shows that the state's Opportunity Scholarship School Voucher Program has a positive, large, and statistically significant impact on student achievement. Our next guest was happy to read the results of that study. Brian Jodis is Interim President of Parents for Educational Freedom in North Carolina. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Mitch. Great to be with you. So you had to be happy as a supporter of school choice to see actual research suggesting that school vouchers work in North Carolina. You know, we've always felt strongly about parental school choice in the state of North Carolina, and, and we've had different measurements along the way to, to kind of measure that in some way, shape, or form. I mean, you can look at application numbers for these programs, demand, the families that are re-enrolling, and you feel good about those things. What we haven't had is some sort of statistical measurement to, to look at a testing and assessment component. And so when an independent research team from NC State steps up and says, we want to do this, we want to take this on, and we want to measure opportunities opportunity scholarship students against their public school counterparts. We thought this is a wonderful idea and a wonderful chance to kind of see where we're at three, four years into this thing and get a real assessment. And what they did from a research standpoint is sound data, sound research. Uh, what we're excited about, really, if you look at the way they did it, and they took opportunity scholarship students who are in year one or year two in the private school of their parents' choice. They matched those up against their public school peers, and they did it with a lot of different data points, demographics being one. But what's really important to remember is they also used end of grade test scores, those EOGs as a measurement point to match the students. So from an apples to apples standpoint, you're looking at kids that were in the same exact spot. Then you introduce the variable, the scholarship, the private school with their parents' choice. And what we've seen is after the first and second years, those scholarship students are outperforming their peers on all three levels, reading, math, and language. One thing that struck me in looking through the report is there's no indication that these are voucher supporters who are looking right. to find evidence to support their right. their already pre-existing belief. This That's looked right. like a, a completely objective look at the situation. And that's, you know, our hope is when you when you take a look at this, if you can pull bias aside, and, and you know where we stand as an advocacy organization for this issue, we're going to fight for it all the time. But if you pull bias aside and you look at what was actually done in this study, I think it's very hard to, to point to anything like that. This is an independent research team working independently. Obviously, we helped them along the way because they reached out to private schools and asked them to participate. We reached back out and said it would be very beneficial if you did this. But from a data collecting and how they put their report together, it's completely unbiased from an independent team. And if you look at the language in the report, I have to think the NC State team feels very strongly about the data they collected. When you see words like large, positive, statistical significance, I didn't write that. Parental school choice supporters didn't write that. An independent research team wrote that. And so that leads us to believe that statistically they've got something pretty strong. That is the voice of Brian Jodis. He is interim president of Parents for Educational Freedom in North Carolina. Uh, I would imagine that based on what the NC State researchers found, what we know, that you'd like to see continual study of this to help confirm that this is the case. Well, you know, if you look at what statutorily is required in the Opportunity Scholarship Program, it calls for an assessment that compares the scholarship students against their public school counterparts. I think we need to know where we're at. If, if you don't measure something, it's hard to really know if it works. We can sit all, all day and say, I'm going to go on a diet and I want to lose all this weight and get in shape. If you don't get on that scale every few days, you're not going to really know where you're at along the progress, uh, whether it's good news or bad news uh, sometimes along the way. And so you, you do need to be able to look at it. You know, all Opportunity Scholarship students and every student enrolled in a private school, for that matter, take a nationally normed test at their school. Uh, there are different levels along the way with the program to what of that has to be reported back to the state agency, depending on the amount of students that they have. But I think if there's some way to put uh, a program in place or a testing and assessment in place like this that is not disruptive to both sets of students, public school and private school students, if we can put something like that in place that is able to do an apples-to-apples -apples measurement, I think it gives us uh, some transparency, uh, an additional layer of accountability uh, that I think is a good thing. And But we also have to look at, too, Mitch, you know, accountability, test scores are important part of that, right? We, it's good to be able to measure that. There's a lot of other factors that go into why these parents are making these choices. And academic outcomes are usually number 1A, but 1B is often safety or even just other family issues as to why they're looking for these alternative measures. So while we'd be for knowing how the students are performing academically, it's also worth taking a look at how are the schools doing? How are the teachers doing? How, how do the parents feel about this program from a parent satisfaction uh, angle? So there's, there's a lot that goes into it, and this is just one piece of it. 
North Carolina's General Assembly has made a long-term commitment to this program, mm -hmm. adding more funding for seven or eight more That's years right. out. Uh, should this particular study give them confidence that they made a good decision? You know, uh, what we've heard from lawmakers, uh, you know, over the last few years since the program's been here is while we support these these measures, and obviously we've shown that with our dedication and forward funding, you know, by the year 2028-2029 school year, you're looking at roughly 36,000 students on the Opportunity Scholarship Program. That budget will be for about $145 million. So to be able to have something that points to some academic success for these students to go along with that, you know, we feel should only help strengthen that. Uh, look, what they're providing is, is an opportunity for families, and, and we've shown that we can provide funding for public education and funding for these private school choice measures and funding for pro public charter schools and leave all these options on the table and hopefully that'll continue to be the case. You've referenced now a couple of times measures other than the statistical student achievement measures. Are there other things that you'd like to see studied about the, the opportunity scholarship? Yeah, I think there's a lot that goes into it. You know, when I think about accountability and what our organization does, again, it's not just about test scores. That's definitely a piece, but what other measurable components do we need to look at or what else do we need to take into consideration as we're making these evaluations? Why are parents looking for these choices? Oftentimes, academics is very high on the list, but it's not the only reason. So if you could look at uh, test scores, and, and what does that look like? It, it's hard to do that because the public school students take a state norm test, private school students take a nationally norm test. That's going to continue to be the case, and we have to figure out a way to sort of probably meet in the middle somewhere to do an evaluation like this. And what was great about this is they were able to take a, a survey battery from the Iowa Skills Basic Test and use that for a measurement. It seems pretty even, like an even point to be able to do that. But it's also worth taking a look at how are the schools performing. I'd love to see what teacher performance is like uh, at different school levels. And then also taking in the parent voice. You know, we are parents for educational freedom in North Carolina. So what we do bubbles up from the grassroots from parents on up and that's how we've always approached things how do parents view these you know what's their satisfaction like when you see 80 to 90 percent of the families on the scholarship choosing to re-enroll that leads me to believe that parents are pretty satisfied with what they're getting so far and if they're not able to re-enroll why is it what we need to know is is it a tuition cost issue is there something else that's getting in the way and how can we be helpful there? So there's a lot that goes into these decisions and there's a lot more from an accountability standpoint that has to do with just test scores. And I'd love to see some sort of model that maybe could take more of those factors uh, you know, into heart you know, as, you're, as you're making an evaluation. In the brief amount of time that we have left, you reference the parents and you're, the first name of your group is right. parents. What are the parents thinking about this, those who have learned about this this new report? You know, what's great for us is, uh, you know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into our work, uh, and there's a lot of trudging through it sometimes. But what is also great is we get to hear firsthand from families, one, that are looking for these programs, but then we also get to visit with them after they've been on the program for a few years. We've got a mom uh, in Charlotte, and she has a, a young daughter who uh, became a, a student on the Opportunity Scholarship Program in the first grade, and she was severely lacking in her reading skills and writing. Now she's in the third grade. She was just awarded her star student award at Victory Christian Center, which is in Charlotte. She's tutoring some young kids in her class as well. So there's stories like that that are, are really amazing. Our organization is going to set out this fall when school goes back in to do a parent satisfaction survey. So we're going to get a real sense as to how families feel on that. So maybe stay tuned for some more news on that and we've got some more measurables to see how families really feel. Right now we, we, we know how they feel. We get a sense how they feel, but we'd like to put some data around that too.